thank you to be here with uh, with Italish. Thank you for your time and uh, thank you for the movie because we have watched it uh, yesterday. Okay. And uh, you still bought the interview. That's good. <laughs> and it's it's brilliant. Thank you. It's thank brilliant. You. And uh, so starting easy. Uh, why? Why? It was a complete accident. We didn't mean it that way at all. Um, we were in a pub in South Galway. Yeah. And we just saw the picture on the wall. Yeah. And beside the picture was a small little note that you see in the film. The yeah. Movie. And on it, on it said, that's my uncle. And that, that's that's my father on one side and my uncle on the other side. So we little, myself and the producer, my brother, we said, uh, we said to ourselves, there's definitely a good story here. So by that evening, uh, my brother, he spoke to the barman, the man who owned the pub, you see him yeah. in the film. And uh, we had got Pat Glynn's number, and he had agreed to do the film with us that evening. Yeah. If we got the money to do it. So it was by complete chance. We didn't really... I had no intention of, oh, I know this picture of all my life. I want to know who the guys are. No, it wasn't it. It was just luck. Yeah. Being in the right place at the right time. You had uh, the TG Kair, my Irish pronunciation is not, not so bad. good. It's, it's, it's okay. Good most Thank Irish you. People, yeah. um, you have uh, support from I them. I had support for them. Well, I've had, I've had support for them for the last 10 years. I've, I've done about, about 20 or 30 documentaries. Yeah. Uh, and they've, they've all done well nationally, but this is the first time I've really had any documentary. I've first had a documentary I've done in English, but it's also the first documentary that's done abroad that has had an international appeal. And for it to go to, from Toronto to New York to Amsterdam, uh, to those festivals, big, huge international festivals, it's been great for There is a, an Irish uh, film festival in Italy, so we hope to see you oh. next year. Yes, I'll, I'll send you something about oh, that. That'd so. be great, because uh, yeah. we've, we've been invited to Luxembourg, Japan, we've been invited to uh, Belgium, uh, all in the next three weeks. Oh, I'm sorry, all in the next two months. So, Perfect. Um, yeah, I might not get to, get to go to Japan, it's just too far away. And uh, you have a, a very important voice in the movie, uh, Fionnola Flanagan. Fionnola Flanagan, yes. She's a beautiful voice. A beautiful voice. Yeah, she's brilliant. Um, what we needed was someone who could do this in English and in Irish. And you know, in Irish. There are very few people who can do that. Uh, well, and there's even le there's lesser of those who can do it in Irish well, but do it in English and be recognised internationally. You know, to be known internationally. Uh, so that's for us. We had a choice of two or three people. She was the first on the list, and um, luckily she for us. She said yes. Yeah, it's uh, it's amazing. She yeah. has uh, she has so brilliant. She has, uh, and she has. I think she gave something oh, to the. Of course, she gave she yeah, gave her emotion she, because yeah. she's li she's lived in um, in uh, America for the last yeah. know, 20, 30 years, maybe even longer. So she knows the Irish story. She knows the immigrant story of what it's like to start at the bottom or and work your way up. So that's what she's done and even though the guys on the beam might be a totally different kind of work to what she's done, you know, it, it, she knows of them. I'm sure her relatives were working in the business, uh, working in the building trade. She knew Irish guys who worked in the building trade. And they so, uh, and what, what I found very interesting is when we were in New York was, yeah. um, we showed the photograph. Now, it didn't make the final cut, but I think we mentioned it towards the end of the film, that we showed the picture to, to Chinese, South Americans, Asians, they have no direct connection to the beam like, like Irish, Italian, Scandinavians, and uh, but they didn't see they didn't see the different countries. They just saw the immigrant struggle, how hard it is to move from one country to the next and start at the bottom and work your way up, um, just like these men did. So that's why I think that the picture still has some resonance in the United States because these immigrants just see their own struggle in those people. Okay, staying on the Italian. Uh, yeah. connections of, yeah. of this interview. Of course, you know, there were uh, also Italians on uh, the beams, mm -hmm. on the steel oh, beams. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, we haven't uh, uh, memory of the times. Uh, what, what we can tell about Ireland, uh, there is more respect for uh, for your memories for your history it's uh, it's easier to be on it also if you are young also if you were not personally there mm -hmm. uh, do you can try to explain why i mean in ireland roots are important mm -hmm. ever yeah. uh, the irish uh, the gaelic connection mm -hmm. and the importance of your fathers or your grandfathers yeah also young people. Uh, why? Why uh, it's so easy here? Uh, I, I'm not sure. I think um, it, 
might have something to do with our history that we were, you know, our, an oppressed people for so long, for so many centuries. And uh, once we finally got out of Ireland, we had, we didn't have it easy, like no country had it easy, but we just had probably this, uh, this mindset that, yes, up until the 1920s, uh, we had no political free will, we, had no, we, we weren't yeah. free people. And that when we went abroad, we were saying to ourselves, well, by God, we're not going to be, we were, we're, we're stood on and uh, oppressed at home, it won't happen when we go to America, where we went abroad. And I think that it was a good, it was always a good news story, it was always a good feel-good story, uh, how, the, how the immigrants did abroad. They did very well, so when the news came back of that, of how the immigrants did, it was always a good story, it was always a good, um, I feel anyways, um, they sent a lot of money home. So the connection between Brit between uh, immigrants and Ireland, I think, is, was very strong because they sent money home. Ireland was a very poor country up until yeah. the 70s, uh, so they were constantly sending money home. I remember myself getting parcels of clothes from America because our cousins, you know, they, they just had better clothes than we did, and they sent it back to us. So I'm sure it's not just an Irish thing, but I'm sure immigrants wherever they went never forgot the country, the country that, they, that, they, that they came from. Maybe, maybe more so Ireland, but. They in turn send money back, clothes back, uh, other stuff back to the country. So I'm not sure if that answers the question of, of, of the direct link. Uh, I'm not sure maybe why we have such a link to our, our past. Um, uh, that I'm not so sure of, but uh, the connection with immigrants is very strong. So um, You were speaking to about the next work, the another next, documentary? Next work. Well, what, 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 what you we can have tell. Is, what we have is... When I, when I did, was doing this documentary, I, I found the film, the, the poster of the, of the great photograph, online, and I ordered a copy of it. Mm -hmm. but, and I thought I'd get back the original photograph of the 11 men on the beam, but what I, I didn't get that. What I got was a photograph taken four seconds or five seconds later, where, where the guy on the far side is, is just inhaling a cigarette, and the guy yeah. on the far left uh, who's looking at the camera in yeah. the original shot, has his eyes closed and is smiling, as if the cameraman had just told him, stop looking at the bloody camera, you know what I mean? So it was taken four seconds later. Mm -hmm. So I was thinking to myself, uh, that was never seen before. And the guys in Corbis and the other archives, yeah. they, they don't know where this came from. The, 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 the poster company who I got the photograph from, they don't know where it came from either. They're not sure where it came from. So uh, that made us think, there must be more than two photographers up on the beam. Because if it takes some time, or the, or the, two, the glass the negative, two. you get the yeah. glass negative out of your shoulder pack yeah. and into the camera. That takes, at that height, that must take at least 20 seconds, I would think, to safely put the, the print that you've just done into your bag and get another one out. And so, and I just think that the, the two angles are slightly different. They're, they're not, there's not much difference, but just a tiny difference, I believe, in both angles of the photograph that we have at home. So that made us. Um, that kind of backed up the story of that there were more than one photographer up there. Now in the film, we placed two guys up there, uh, Lim and William Leftwich and Thomas Kelly. Now I'm not. There's also a claim from Charles Evitz that his, he was up there. He might well have been, but I think the family photograph that they have of him um, has no particular date on it. Now that doesn't mean he didn't take the photograph, but it means there were at least two, maybe three photographers up there that day. And the fact that the, we, we have just found another print taken four or five seconds later means that uh, it's got a bit more messy. And we need to answer, we, we, we've just created more questions. And sometimes the answers are, To explore. Yeah, yeah. sometimes the answers that, that you get... No, sometimes the questions are just as important as the answers. Uh, especially in this film, I think. The questions are very important. We have found some guys, but also, uh, since the film has been made, the last couple of mo last month or two, we have found two other guys on the two other names who are definitely on. By going back into Rockefeller archives, we found two more names. So we have four concrete names: uh, Joe Curtis and Joe Eckner. We've named them in the film. Uh, no, not from Ireland. No, no. Uh, European. I, I I have to check my files to see yeah. what the names are from. But I can't really tell that until the film is made. But they're European. Plus, we have Sonny and Matty on either side. We don't. We, in the film, we can't prove it's them. Yeah. It doesn't mean it's not them, though. But we can We have proven for definite four guys are there. We have claims from two claims in the last couple of weeks from Sweden, 
and one claimed from Norway that their families are on the beam, as well as up to 12 other people in the States who claim their father was on the beam. So, so can you imagine a reunion of... Uh, we can have of a the imagine a reunion of, uh, of relatives, of, of ancestors. Um, so that's particularly much where our, our, our project is going at the moment, to find out who the photographers were and to find out the rest about find out who the rest of the men might be. Now, it's not only the men are important, but also the claims, why these families want to be associated with the picture, that's also important. So, I don't admit this to be a, a similar documentary to the one we have. But what we have at the moment is, you know, it's cinematic, it's a, it's a, a it's a 60, it's a 70 minute film. I think the next one will be more TV driven, probably a bit more investigative, and it might even be presenter driven. We haven't even thought about it really, but that's the way it probably needs to go. One guy to find out who these, who these various photographers and people are. Okay. Anyway, what what's happening to Irish movie, Irish movie industry? Because uh, there are a lot of interesting yeah. things coming out. Uh, we have seen Seven Psychopaths, mm -hmm. uh, The Guard, yeah. the McDonald's brothers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What do you think about uh, this Irish way to have uh, thriller movies, uh, these noir movies uh, with? Uh, Something that is iron, Irishness, yeah. in the I think the grabbers, grabbers, the grabbers. Well, something yeah. different. Anyway, well, well, I think it's probably just. Um, it's not, it's, I don't think it's in my film, although there, there's a bit of humor in my film. Yeah, the absolutely. But I think it's probably just due to do with Irish humor. I think there's a strange, kind of quirky, dark way of looking at the world. You know, we've as a people we've been through a lot. Yeah. Uh, still going through a lot with uh, a terrible bailout package, and uh, so yeah. the, we we even find some way of laughing about that yeah. and making jokes about that. There are there are um, plays and stage shows based on the bailout and how, yeah. how the banking crisis. So I think that's just a, probably just a strange way that we have no problem in laughing about ourselves, making it's fun a, of ourselves. Probably it's a, ba a Beckett lesson you have learned, Samuel yes. Beckett. So, uh, but also, I think, uh, true in Beckett in English language, but also in Irish language literature, it's very dark. The humour is very personally gets underneath you sometimes uh, and that's just the way it is you know uh, that's coming from the Irish language point of view as I am there are a lot more um, a lot of the stories that, that we were taught and that we've learned and we've, and we've read are dark humor stories humor stories that you probably don't find as much in the English language but I think that all comes back at some stage everyone in Ireland spoke Irish so I think that probably has just filtrated down through uh, English language and of course the McDonough brothers um, their family are from the west coast of Ireland yes. Uh, one of their father, their, their father would be a native Irish speaker. So where he's from in Littlemore is a very, very uh, rich area, like where I am from in Carnet. It's a very, very rich area of the oral tradition, and I'm sure that has not gone. Uh, some of that has been has. Uh, they might not know that, but they've been infected, affected some way by that. Okay, thank you. I I think that's enough. Uh, okay. Thank you for Italish, and uh, hope to see you in Rome then. Yes, we would. Love. I would love to be going to Rome, but I think there there is. Now, we haven't teased it out, and I'm not just saying it because you're here, but there is an Italian connection here, because the, the Irish and the Italians, there's one thing about them, is when they got their foot in the door, yeah. they didn't let it out. 